Hey everybody out there in YouTube land, this is Sam Dennehy, aka Half-Ass Customs, and this is Half-Ass Presents, the podcast slash history of Half-Ass Customs. So as you all know, or most of you know, um, Half-Ass Customs, that's that's the name, that, that's what I primarily uh, focus on, customs, uh, from hot rods, low riders, custom cars to rat rods. Um, I primarily focus on those because that's the genre of vehicles that I love to build in all scales from 125th scale to 164th to 187th um, and to 1-1. I've had a couple of uh, questionable um, cool cars in the past and uh, Hopefully, if I can somehow keep going, I will continue to have some cool cars in the future. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to talk to you guys about the lowrider scene. So, a lot of you don't know um, that you can make a lowrider into this scale. Um, I'm going to show you just how you can um, with the right tools and the right skills. Um, and the right links to be able to uh, build yourself a lowrider if you wanted to. Now, most of you uh, aren't into this look. I get it. Um, it's more, you know, I was born on the West Coast, Southern California, the home of the lowrider, the birthplace of the lowrider. Um, and I grew up with that most of my life, so I fell in love with it. The very first music video I saw that had a car jumping off the ground, I just fell in love. And that's been my passion and love in the automotive world ever since and still is today. So it took me a long time, a good probably four years to find a, this was before 3D printing, to find a toy that was small enough to have some sort of spoked wheel in it in order for me to rob and put into a 187 scale car. And I was in Walmart one day and I found these, uh, the movie cars, cars, the movie, animated movie. They had these little tiny cars that were smaller than 187 scale called mini drifters. Basically, a uh, solid um, hollow casting of the vehicle with the base that had the chassis and the wheels connected. And right in the center of it had this big old bearing or ball, like marble, um, that sat a little bit higher than the car or lower than the car. And it, that allowed the car to drift over a flat surface. Um, I don't really know what they were for. They didn't make any much sense. They didn't even have a commercial for them that I can recall. Um, but I saw they had the Jaguar from, I guess, the first movie or maybe the second movie. I don't know. Either way, the Jaguar came with, you know, like 1960s spoked rims with a three-star knockoff in the center. Um, and I looked at that car and I said... It looks pretty small. The wheels uh, are pretty small. So let me just buy a pack and see if it'll fit. And sure enough, I took the car apart, cut out the wheels, grinded them down to, to fit into one of the cars. And this car here, this is 1959 Chevy Impala. And these are the wheels. So if we can get down there like that, I don't know if you can see them that well. Maybe if I go out and zoom in. Yeah, you can see it's a spoked solid wheel. So the tire and rim is all one piece. And it has like a 60s sort of style spoked rim. And they fit perfect. And they're almost the same size as a lowrider wheel. Um, I will say these are probably about a 14 inch 
wheel in this scale. So they are a little, well, I think maybe a 15 inch rim. Either way, I found the wheel. Four years of looking for toys of any kind that could come up with a wheel. So I bought probably 10 packs uh, going for, I think, $7.99 a piece um, of those so I can... I, I, I didn't cast my own parts then. I don't, still don't do it now. So I bought these expensive packs just for the one car, and they came with three different cars um, for the one car. And I had myself some lowrider wheels. So then I sent those off to a friend that made vinyl white walls, like peel and stick white walls. And those were the smallest little things he's ever, uh, white walls he's ever created. And he said, uh, here you go. I think I paid him like 40 bucks for a full like 8 by 11 sheet of all white walls. And I was off and running with low rider tires and rims. So very happy about that. It only took me forever to find them, but I found them. So once that was done, um, this was the very first low rider I ever built. So um, I had some 125th scale decals that uh that I had left over from an old build that I cut to uh, fit this 59 Impala. So I painted the base um, just silver. Then I put metal flake over the base. And then I put the decals on and the decals are transparent so the metal flake shines through it. And then I cleared it. So it gave, gave it that, that even more shine I put bare metal foil on the grill and the bumpers and the side trim and then the rear end. And the window is like a thick clear plastic that I cut and form and fit into there because this was before I knew about the tape method from Mike Bud. Um, it's an old model, this thing's dripping. The clear is not uh, holding up as good as it, it did back in the day. But either way, this was the very first lowrider I ever built. Um, it's an alloy form uh, model. And I was completely happy because, in my opinion, this is the first true lowrider, actual lowrider looking car, I believe, built in this scale. There's other attempts at lowriders. Um, people have built like 57 Chevy sitting up on three wheels. What I mean by three wheels like this, you, you achieve that by the hydraulics in the suspension. Um, somebody built a 57 Chevy like that in the European area, but it wasn't like a low rider. It didn't have the low rider look. It didn't have the paint job. It didn't have um, what a traditional like West Coast California low rider would have. So I felt in my opinion that this 59 was the first uh, best looking low rider that was ever built in this scale. From that point on, I have no idea what was the second low rider that I built. I have no clue. Um, possibly the 64 Impala, the love machine from Up and Smoke. This isn't the first one I built. This is actually the third one I built. First one I sold, I should have probably kept it and then just built another one. But um, it's got the Supreme five spoke wheels on there. And uh, yeah, I'm. I'm happy with it. This is a resin casting of a 64 Impala um, that I got a hold of. And that's why it's not perfectly, uh, I guess, perfect. Anyways, so this might have been the second car lowrider I ever built. Um, more traditional, I guess, lowrider from the 70s. 
because it's got the Supremes before they made the Dayton wire wheels that have, like have hunter spokes and whatnot. But let's get to the how and, and, and why and whatever. So basically, just like I said on the green 59, you get a car, you paint it a base coat of silver, then you put the smallest metal flake you can find on there from if it whether it be it nail polish or spray paint or if you can get it through a airbrush and then you uh find some decals um of some kind or don't put any decals on just after you spray the glitter on there or the metal flake then you can just paint over that metal flake with a a clear um a clear color like a candy color um trying to see if i have one that i did like that um i guess i guess it's this so this is 63 impala this was silver base metal flake underneath then i sprayed a candy green over it and then honestly i sprayed another uh metal flake on top of that and then i sprayed clear over it so a four stage paint job basically um and then after that, you just get the wheels. Now, um, Severin from the Netherlands designed a new style lowrider uh, rim for me, which is basically this. Um, I don't know if you can really tell. It is a spoked style, um, completely uh, solid rim and tire. And so, once you get those then you can get the white walls i have white walls or you can have white walls made um i know john tyson offers white walls and there's a uh, another company that offers white walls but either way um once you get the small little wheels then you put it together and you have yourself a low rider um you know for the most part but I'm going to go in order, uh, starting with the first year of the Impala, the 1958 Chevy Impala. So these are station wagons. They didn't make Impala station wagons. They made Nomads. They made Brookwoods. And they made, uh, in Canada, they made Yeomans. And there could be another one. Um, Parkwood, maybe. Brookwood. Um, and then you have the Classic Metalworks. 58 Impala um, so these are the 58 Impalas or 58 Chevys all low rider style then you go into the 59s so this black one is an ally form this pink one is a resin casting that's an ally form ally form resin and then the El Camino which is a resin so these are 59, and then you got a 1960, which is much more rare, much more harder to find. Uh, Joe Fay created the 1960 Chevy Impala. He made it as a four-door hardtop with a flat roof. Um, this is the only one that I ever built out of the three that I got from him um, that I uh, finished. Now I made it into a lowrider. And then you got the 61. These are Oxford die cast. And then the rims are specialty rims. So it's a two part rim. Um, hold on. It's a two part rim. The center um, rim is a spoked style uh, rim, I guess you would say. Um, and then I have the, the ring, that chrome ring in the tires are made from, I think, Bush, um, perhaps, or some European company. And the same thing with this one. The only difference is with this one, I put a knockoff on the center. Um, and the rim and tire setup, if you look, I want to somehow... I can't say mass produce them, but I want to make a whole bunch more versions of this because 
the John Tyson rims, the spoked rim look, are just awesome. And then you tie it up with these uh, tires and the ring, and it's it makes for a perfect lowrider look. But these are the 61 Impalas. I had a 62. Um, it was from RPM 87 in Europe, but I only ever had one and I sold it. Um, I need to get another one. They didn't make an Impala. He only made that casting as a Bel Air, but still a 62 Chevy. And I had made that into a Lowrider. Pretty much the same paint scheme as this red and white one. I just had it all red. Next up is the 63 Impala. Um, same thing. Lowrider decals, lowrider paint jobs, lowrider tires. You see we got the six lights in back. Um, and the neat thing about this casting is right beneath the center lights is a bumper guard. That was an extra add-on from the factory that cost a little bit of money. And even the grill, you see these little bumps underneath the center lights? Well, the bumps are like a Dagmar um, from a Cadillac, kind of. And then it's got a center crossbar that goes across the grill that attaches to the two um, Dagmars, I guess you would call it. And that was an also added extra piece from Chevy or from GM, which was really cool. And all the 63s have it because they were just casted that way. So obviously, you know, um, this came as a hard top. I cut off the top and then made a convertible top for it out of a 59 convertible top from Alley Form. I just cut it and shaped it and added a convertible frame to it. Um, and then stance, stance is everything. So completely lowered in the front, somewhat lifted in the back. And then like this one, lifted in the front, lowered in the back. So, um, I love these cars. I love Impalas. Impala is my favorite, uh, Chevy ever. Um, and then we got this one. This has got a different paint scheme and wheel color combo. Uh, simple, but neat. I won't get into Local 64. I already did the video on that. Everybody's seen it. Um, but then there's the movie car, the love machine, as they called it, from the movie Up in Smoke with Cheech and Chong. So that... These are 64, 64, 64, and then we go here. This, kind of a neat thing, it's a one-off. It is a 64 four-door Impala hardtop uh, El Camino. So basically, I just took a station wagon, I cut the whole top off, put a two-door rooftop on it. It lines up perfect with the rear doors. And I left the back open kind of like a Chevy Avalanche would have a roll back, roll down back uh, window with the bed. So it's a four door hardtop Impala Camino, I guess. Um, and then we got this full lowrider uh, 64 there with a chopped. Um, I don't even know what you'd call this top. It's chopped in the center. It's got blue uh, blue walls with the lowrider paint job. And then one of my favorite uh, 64s. Um, it's black with the rainbow metal flake, the antennas, the windows that are rolled up. It's got the convertible boot with the fifth wheel continental kit on the back. And the neat thing, can I hold this up hold up the neat thing about this car um, it's got adjustable suspension so 
you can lower it in the front and then raise it up in the back. So it sits at different levels. But yeah, this is one of my favorite 64s I ever built because it's very West Coast lowrider look. Um, and then the one that I just showed you earlier, sitting on three wheel, you got the hydraulic uh, pistons in there with the makeshift suspension on the bottom and the full lowrider paint job on the inside and out. Um, and then we got the 64 Impala station wagons. So there's the 64s. I don't have a 65 or a 66 yet, but those are coming. Um, thanks to um, RPM 87 that is offering the 66. And then Shapeway Mad About Cars is offering the 65. Then we got two 67s. Um, Lowrider paint schemes, of course. Um, rims paint to match the interior and exterior. And this one is more kind of new school Lowrider. Like a um, low rod, I guess they would call it. You got the bigger rims, but still Lowrider-esque. Um... But yeah, these are 67s. I don't have 68, 69. I did have a 69. No, maybe I had a 70. I uh, traded it to uh, Joseph Bolivins. It was a station wagon. Had a lowrider paint job with lowrider wheels. He's putting it in a showroom for his dealership or his car garage or something. But in the back, we got another Oxford diecast bomb. So in the lowrider world... Um, Anything from like 1940s uh, and older, they call them bombs. It's basically just a stock vehicle uh, detailed to the nines and lowered. Or you can keep it stock. Or you can even put lowrider wheels on it. But anything from the 40s and below, they would call them bombs. Bombs, lowriders, lowrider bombs. So all I did with this is I liked everything about it except for the stance, so I just lowered it. So just sitting on the ground, scraping the ground. And then this is, I think, a Buick Grand National. Um, just put some lowrider decals on it. Gave it a rainbow metal flake overall. Got the rims. And... Uh, Blacked out the, the bumpers and the grill. And uh, kind of like a stealthy, I don't know, black and silver lowrider look. One of my favorite cars of all time. RPM. RPM. RPS. Uh, I think it's a 350 Dually. That I cut the top off. And open the bed up so it connects to the interior. Put some custom uh, interior paint scheme in it. Decals. Exterior. Um, it's all custom. And the tail lights are clear. Um, you know, if you had like a basically clear lenses and then you stepped on the brake, th there'd be LEDs underneath it, which... You know, I'm not wiring this up to emulate that, but um, just a slammed uh, 350 Dually permanent convertible chop top, I guess. Lowrider style. And then we got a 55 Allied Form uh, Lowrider back here. And all I did is I didn't even paint the car. I just put the decals over it and cleared it so the decals would hold on. Um, because if you just put decals over a car without clearing it, the decals can just fall off. So that was just a simple build, build, very simple. And then we got a resin 1955 Chevy Nomad that I low-ridered out. 
and then another bomb this is a solid resin um i don't know who made this i actually think russ campbell made this um where he got the master from i'm not sure but yeah that's a russ campbell casting of uh i think a 41 chevy maybe i don't know maybe you guys can tell me whatever that grill emulates with that shape that would tell you and then this is another solid casting i think this is from uh i don't know who this was from i got this in a bag of a bunch of cars and it was missing the front corner bottom part but i didn't care so i just painted it and gave it this lowrider look but yeah this is my lowrider um collection these are the cars i built i have built other ones that i have since sold i had the 62 i had oh shoot i had two 62s I actually had two 62s i had a joe fay casting of a 62 that i turned into a hopper so i had an adjustable rear end i think the front end was adjustable too that's where i got the idea for the 64 um, and then I had uh, a wire hanging out with a little figure standing next to it with the switch box so it looked like he was controlling the car hopping. And then I had a taloned um, Chevy Silverado truck that I chopped the top off of that and then I made the bed have um, different stances so it lifted up. They call them bed dancers. If you if you're interested in the lowrider world, those would have been called bed dancers. So it had the adjustable bed to lift up and dance. Basically, I sold that too. And then the other one was the RPM eighty seven um, sixty two Bel Air that I had. That was a super clean build, and I shouldn't have sold it, but I did. And I'll get another one. I'll build it again. But um, yeah. Anyways. My lowrider collection, I can definitively say I've got the world's largest, smallest lowrider collection in the world. Um, and yeah, if you guys have any questions on any of this stuff, I doubt you would. But if you do, um, don't hesitate to uh, comment below and ask me whatever you want. Um, I can build you your own lowrider, um, if you want to, I can, um, I can paint a car. I can kind of do anything you need. If you need me to do something to help you build something like that, I can help you out. Um, or, you know, whatever. If you just want to buy one that's completely built, let me know. But either way, if you like this video, I'll try and keep, uh, recording more videos of the history of half-ass customs and upload them every thursday to every other thursday and just keep it going so if you like this please like and subscribe to my channel and the podcast interview videos will be up every monday until next week or the week after for this episode um stay tuned I'll see you soon. See you later.